different this morning. Just bear with me. I'm going to sing a song, and then after that, I'm going to play you a song, and then we will further go with, go further with prayer. play you a song that tells us who is this man that hanged on the, on the cross and while we listen to the song I want you to just think 
and meditate about your relationship with this man. In a statement, his mother, a virgin, raised in a car and to shop. His people were slaves, his parents were poor, his friends were a lonely lot. His chances in life are very slow. He's expected to be a slave. But people in darkness all lie on him and all of freedom he gave. All of the power in heaven and earth God has invested in him. He's to die on a cross, descend into hell, meet the devil, take the keys from him. He yielded himself to a death of the cross, cried, it's finished, and slung to die. In the regions of hell, the devil celebrated. We've destroyed the key, they cried. In the midst of the celebration, footsteps were heard, walking the corridors of hell. Then the shouting stopped. When a voice rang out, a voice that rang like a bell, Satan then trembled as he recognized him, who came to deliver his own. Shut and lock the gates, he cried. Ascend to his throne. Then the gates swung shut in the face of the king to prove God's salvation and truth. His body shook hell's gates and cried, Lift up your hands. The king is come. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Little boy from the carpenter shop that played with pieces of wood that was lying all over the floor of that shop. A little boy that sometimes made his own little toys and perhaps tools. A little boy that sometimes cried because of pieces of wood would enter his feet and his father had to take it out and say quickly run to your mother because it's bleeding. A little boy that became a teenager that had pimples and that felt clumsy and that went Sunday school and spoke to his father and his mother don't you understand what I must do? And then he was baptized, this little boy, this young man. And then John the Baptist said, there is the Lamb of God. What? That boy that played in his father's carpenter shop? This is blasphemous. And then this young man seek for his disciples and he handpicked them through the Holy Spirit that fulfilled him because the Father has said, here is my, my child. Yeah, that little boy at the age of 32 as a true shepherd carried us all on his shoulders. More he took us with our sins. More he took us because of our sins. Because the Father heart is bleeding as we go astray. The Father heart is crying as we worship sometimes ourselves. The Father's heart is in turmoil when He hears our talking, our jealousy, our hate speech. The Father heart is torn into pieces when he sees how we go about with one another. And therefore, the little boy had, he had to come to earth. He had to live. He had to suffer. He had to bear all the pain. He had to sweat in the Gethsemane. He had to plead with, his, with God, his Father, and say, please take this cup away from me. But not my will, but your will. The little boy of the carpenter shop. Wow. He came, became the man that said, Today you will be with me in heaven, in the paradise. Mother, there's your son. Son, there's your mother. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me?
Father, I give to you my soul. I'm thirsty. It's been done. He had to say it. Because if this little boy didn't gr grow up and, and said those words on a cross, there wouldn't have been a Marius. Yeah, I would have been there, but <coughs> where to? There wouldn't have been a united church. There wouldn't have been churches and congregations. It would have been hell. And hell only. Killing, stealing, hate. Father, help us today to walk out of here and to go and share with everyone who we meet along the way, everyone that we stay with or live with, everyone that we know, every family member. Let us take the WhatsApps, take the cell phone, take the internet, take Facebook, and we share the little boy of the carpenter shop with this world. Share it with this world. Amen. Let us confess our sins, page one. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance through weakness through our own deliberate fault we are truly sorry and repent of our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then the word of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us do the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Isaiah 12. You will find it in Isaiah 12. Beautiful paragraph, wonderful paragraph that we, um, refers to the coming of the coming of Jesus Christ or a Savior. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of the salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, 
make known among the nations what he has done and proclaim that his name is exalted sing to the lord for he has done glorious things let this be known to all the world shout aloud and sing for joy people of zion for great is the holy one of israel among you let us pray heavenly father Thank you for your wonderful word. Thank you for your love. And thank you for this morning. We want to pray that you will be with Rod. And as I'm praying now for him, I'm thinking of the fact that he would be in Operation Theatre 12 o'clock. And will you please tell him to your Holy Spirit, it was the same time of the day that you were crucified, and that you would be will be with him, because you have forsaken your son to be with to be with Rod this morning. You have forsaken your son to be with us this morning and every day of our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And therefore, as we see the, the wine and the bread, we lift up our hearts. We lift them to you. We give thanks to you. And we give you thanks and praise. Amen. The New Testament reading is in Philippians, Philippians 2, which is also a song. In one of my researches I've done with music and therapy, I came to the, to the knowledge of this beautiful passage that has been written um, to, be, to be sung by all Christians and all the churches um, on our way as we walk the walk and not only talk the talk. So Philippians, um, Philippians 2, your life in Christ makes you strong and his love comforts you you have fellowship with the spirit and you have kindness and compassion for one another i urge you then to make me completely happy by having the same thoughts sharing the same love and being one in soul and mind do not do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, but be humble toward one another, always considering others better than yourselves, and look out for one another's interest, not just for your own. The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always, and that is where the song is, he always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to become equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a man and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. For this reason God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so in honor of the name of Jesus, 
all beings in heaven, on earth and in the world below, will fall on their knees, and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We praise you, O God, our Father, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So we can say together, page 3, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Thank you. <clears throat> the scripture reading we have this morning is from Luke. Luke, Matthews, Mark and Luke. Luke 24. I mean, so sorry, not Luke 24. 22. 22, thank you, Johan. Um, Luke 22. From verse 47, we won't read everything, we will skip here and there a verse, but I want you to, to get the thread of the story that we are reading here. The heading there, before we get to verse 47, is Jesus is arrested. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas one of the twelve was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion? That you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then Peter, the heading there, disowns Jesus. And then the gods mock Jesus. And then from verse 66, Jesus now before Pilate and then Herod. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are right in saying I am. Then they said, Verse 71, Why do we need any more testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. Now why have they said that? They said that because they had, there must be someone 
that could confess, could witness that Jesus Christ was at that point uh, guilty of breaking one of the laws of, of Moses by saying to himself, I am the Son of God. And therefore they said in verse 71, Why do we need any more testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. But let me get to the service, or to the sermon, rather. Right through the history of the world, there has been court cases. You can go and, and read it up, look it up, thanks to Google. Ages and ages ago, there was court case after court case. There was trials. <coughs> trials in America, trials in Africa, trials in South Africa, just trials everywhere through the world. And one of the biggest court cases and trials uh, in, since the days that we were in the world is the, is the Nuremberg trial in 1945 where they want to convict it, all the people that was part in the World, II, world War II. And let us, bring, we come to, let us come to South Africa. Can you remember 1994, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission? It was sitting for days and days. They went from province to province. And months of meetings happened and cross-questioning. And we were, in a way, we were relieved when it, was, when it was passed because it implicated us as white people. Also us that was on the border. And now it is the Zondo Commission. I don't know how many years this is going on now. Last year already, they said at that point in time, it cost 365,000 rand. I don't know where they are now. And we, are get, we get so irritated with this commission and the work to hear all the, all the uh, state capture, money slandering, And let us be honest, we feel so irritated and negative. And sometimes after I've listened to the news, I would walk away and I would say words of hate speech. And I can't repeat yet. <laughs> but, never Never, never in the world history there was a case that was so cruel, so rigged, so full of hate than the one of Jesus Christ. Every law school in this world at every university where it is, where they have a law school, doesn't matter the country, they will study this court case. And the students know they must prepare themselves very well for the exams because they will have, they will get a question about this court case. And what will the question be? The question will be. In how many ways was the Roman law broken during this case? The case of Jesus Christ visit, uh, versus the Roman Empire. But it didn't stop there. The case of Jesus Christ versus the church of that day. The case of Jesus Christ versus Herod. The case of Jesus Christ 
versus Pontius Pilate. The case of Jesus Christ versus the Sanhedrin. Eighteen hours it took them. And who were they? The church of the day. The politicians. Eighteen. Eighteen mosaic laws. That was, that was torn apart by the church. To get him convicted. Eighteen. Within 18 hours. I wish we had time to go through it one by one. To see the hate towards Jesus Christ. The political, the political hate. The hate from the church. The hate from the Pharisees. From the Sadducees. The hate from the Sanhedrin. The hate from the high priest. Why did the high priest hate him so much? Who was the leader of the high priest at that point in time? Caiaphas. And what did Caiaphas did? He, he ripped apart the law that said, only the Levi people can become high priest. You remember that? In the Old Testament, only the, from the tribe of Levi you could become a high priest. And he took all his sons in law, in law, and he made them high priests. They weren't from the from the, the, the tribe of Levi. And they formed a company. And it was them. It was them that sold people in the temple things from their tables. And it was their tables that Jesus capsized. Turned over. It was them that Jesus took a whip and he chased them out because he knew what they were doing. So they were in hate towards Jesus. So that was another problem here in this court case. He, had, he went through seven trials in 18 hours. The, the trial was before Pilate. The one trial was before the Sanhedrin. The other trial was before the Pharisees. The other trial was before the high priest Caiaphas and his sons-in-law. And then the other trial was against the people of Israel that screamed, let his blood be on our blood. And the other trial was against Barabbas. Seven to eight trials. 18 mannerisms, 18 ways that, the, that this group of politicians, church, spiritual leaders, elders, deacons, that they broke. That they broke. And also in this court case, it, it reads like a soapy. I wish again we had time to go through every verse to show us this soapy, this real soapy. In between these seven uh, uh, groups that Jesus had to appear in front was in between the main role players and they all, all of them, Caiaphas, Pilate, Herod, Antipas, name them all, Peter, Judas, they had all a conflict of interest. Political conflict. Their own, their own dreams, their own ways. Like Pilate. He wants to be, he wanted to be, one of those days he wanted to be the emperor. So that, that is why he had to react very carefully towards the Jewish people, but also towards his Roman emperor in Rome, because he's got, he had his own, his own agenda. The own agenda. Does that sound familiar? Let me tell you again 
and I will say this until the day I die, nothing that we are experiencing now is new to the Bible. Nothing. Not this COVID-19. God, do you remember Egypt? How many COVIDs did they have? Nothing is new. The Illuminati, New Age, nothing is new. Nothing is new. What we are experiencing in this country, nothing is new. Listen to this court case. It's like our own country. Interest, my own ideas, my own thoughts. But why? Why is this court case so unique, so different? Because God planned it to be like that. God allowed it to be like that. God wanted it to be like that. Therefore, if you read through the Old Testament, you read in a few hundred verses how it's been prophesied that the king will come, the little boy in the carpenter's shop will stand in front of his shearers. In Isaiah we read it like a lamb, like a lamb, without a voice, without anyone on his side to give a testimony without anyone calling out leave this man leave this man even one of the one of the reverends that's now recently been caught for money slandering even him had a woman standing up in court screaming leave him alone he is a man of god and then he was convicted, and then he fled the country. I don't want to mention names. I've heard it with my own ears on the radio at his fear. <clears throat> While in court, he slandered millions of these people's money. But in court, a woman stood up and said, He is a true man of God. Leave him alone. And she went on and she said, I've seen with my own eyes how he resurrected people from the dead, or from death. And Jesus witnesses what did Peter did. I don't know him. And Judas, I kiss him. And then you take him into custody. It's been prophesied. Why? Because he had to die for you, for me. So that we, when we one day stand in court, and that will be the second biggest court case of the universe, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we will stand there and, and the King of Kings, the God of Gods, the only God, the triune God will say, come in front of me. And as we, are, as we stand in front of him, there will be a big screen. And it will show from the internet of heaven my life. And before I will fall down in shame, the video will go pitch black. And then our advocate, 
will enter. And he will say, Father, I know him. And then with the click of an eye, even quicker, the pitch black of the internet screen will go pure white. And the heavenly light will shine from it. And the angels will sing. We know Marius. Let him come to the fore. Let him go in peace. This is where the real uniqueness, uniqueness lies of this court case. He had, he had to undergo it. He had to. He had to be alone. He had to be rejected. He had to suffer the foul play. He had to suffer the hate of Caiaphas and his sons-in-law. He had to be betrayed. He had to be dishonored by Peter. He had, he had to undergo it for you and for me. Why do, why do we struggle to see it? Why do we struggle to accept it? It's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. He had to become the scapegoat for you and for me. Because he is the Messiah. He's the child of God. He's the perfect lamb. He's the Lord of God. He's the host of all hosts. He's the bright morning star. He's the root of David. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the open door. He's the light. He's the truth. He is the truth. He's the only Savior. He's the healer. He's the only one that's righteousness. Where does that leave us? First of all, on Good Friday to repent. To repent. Then to accept. It's for me. It can't be, we say. Can't be. Look at my past. It's for you. It's for you. And then, then he would ask us to go out of here and go and forgive. Go and accept. Go and be willing to wash feet. To wash feet. Go out and be willing to be a servant. Go out and be willing to be a seed that dies of itself. Go out and be willing to be a servant. Oh, we like to be served. We love it. But the moment that we need to serve, so difficult. So difficult. Go out and live. And try to do everything that we do. As Colossians 3 verse 23 says, as if you do it to Jesus. Go out and have the same innermost that he had as Philippians tells us to do. Have the same innermost and that of Jesus. Go out there and serve this world. Go out and live even if it's COVID-19, even if we have to wear this mask Go out and live. Go out and try and make changes to other people's lives. 
and go out and love, just love your neighbor like yourself. And stop the arguments. Yeah, but who is my neighbor? <laughs> my neighbor is everyone whom I meet every day. Go out and bring changes to this world. Even if it's one person, just go out with the authority of the man of Galilee, the little boy of the carpenter's shop that went through hell in 18 hours and before and after so that we can be saved and that we may live. Make peace with the things that you cannot change anymore. I cannot change the money slaughtering in South Africa. But I can only pray that Christians that is there in the parliament would stand up and say, let us take the truth and let us reconcile But I can make a change or a difference to the people around me. Let me see where we can make a difference. And let's do it. But with what authority? The authority that Jesus Christ gave you when he died on the cross. With that authority. If you have time, go through the Word of God and make notes of this court case. <coughs> and go and study, look it up, and you will see how the machine of hell came into action. And how all, all the, um, what is Ratte in Engels? Yes. Years came together. They were so oiled. So oiled. But remember that oil is also a sign in the Bible of the Holy Spirit. And we have the pure oil. And let us take all our gears and put it together and go out there and help people to be prepared for the biggest court case the second coming of Christ that's on its way Amen Alan, can you please um, let's just uh, collect the offering then? And the other Alan or Fani, can you just open up here the, the, the uh, wine and the waiters for us? Please? Heavenly Father, we feel so shy because we give back so little. But we know that you want us 
to give ourselves and help us to do just that, to give ourselves. Thank you that you are blessing this congregation. Thank you that you are uplifting us, keeping us and helping us to just live and make a difference wherever we go. Amen. Thank you. Therefore, Father, as you have commanded us, we do this in remembrance of you. And we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Let us draw near in faith. And let us remember that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for us to keep us in eternal life. And that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for us to keep us also in eternal life. <clears throat> Of the king to prove God's salvation. 
revelation unto the His body shook hell's gates and cried, Lift up your hands, the King is coming through. in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, <coughs> prepared for all mankind. Amen.